and somebody ought to belt you in the mouth. But I won't. I won't. The hell I will. I love a good line. It's like one of my favorite fight scenes from a John Wayne movie. And I hope you uh, get to see it. Uh, little bits and pieces torn us. And this is Rich Auerbach and happy Tuesday and welcome to my channel. Well, today's comedian is Jody Fuller. Uh, Jody has got a, is a stammerer, but his humor is enlightening and I think poignant. And I think you'll enjoy it. And uh, we'll let Jody get right to it. Jody, take it away. Auburn had the great running backs like B -B -B uh, Bo Jackson, and he was like me because he stuttered. It was so good. I'm like, Bo stutters. And then two years before that, Hershey Walker was at Georgia, and he stuttered. I'm like, well, obviously, if you stutter, you're going to be a football player. <laughs> so I was the starting quarterback for my Opelika Junior High School football team in 1985, and I'll never forget the first game of the year. We were down by five. We had all three timeouts left, but I knew that I was going to be able to drive my team down for that winning score, and they were going to me off the field like Rudy, it was gonna be the best thing ever. I'm like, yeah, man. I remember I, I got behind my center and 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 and, and they called me for delay a game. Uh, <laughs> so they backed us up five yards. I got behind him again, and I did, and I dropped out of pass, and I hit my best friend, Adrian, still my best friend to the day, hit him over the middle for a 14-yard gain. I ran up to the referee, I said, time out, time out, time out, time out. He charges with all three timeouts. <laughs> we lost the game. <laughs> that was my first and last start, but uh, that's okay. I wasn't me meant to be a football player. I try to bring awareness to stuttering through humor. That's what, and one of the biggest pet peeves for people who stutter is when people want to finish our sentences for us. And a lot of times I don't care, but sometimes I do care. I was flying out to Las Vegas for a gig a, uh, uh, a couple of years ago, and I was sitting next to a sweet lady, and she wasn't trying to be ugly. She just didn't know any better. But she asked me, she said, so where are you staying? I said, I'm staying at the mm, mm. She said, MGM. I said, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. I said, I'm saying that to, mm, mm. She said, Mirage. I said, no, ma'am, not there either. I said, I'm saying that to, mm, mm. She said, Monte Carlo. I said, lady, this ain't named that tune. You ain't gonna win nothing. <laughs> I'm staying at the Bellagio. You know, sometimes I say things that just makes me feel not so smart, but I was not prepared. Uh, uh, my mother never prepped me for this question. My father passed away when I was eight years old, so he, he didn't prepare, and I just had no idea. So I'm working in the store one, one Sunday afternoon, 16 years old, lady comes into the store, she says, young man? I said, yes ma'am, how can I help you? She said, where are your feminine napkins? <laughs> So I took her back to the paper towel aisle. I said, I think these are real pretty. I had no idea. Learned a lot that day. Oh man, I love working there. Man, man. It, it's important to listen to people. You know, it's the polite and courteous thing to do. Number two, you may learn something. And number three, they may say something funny. But number four, it could prevent you from getting your hind end whooped. Because a guy comes to the store, and he's about six foot nine, 300 pounds, look like Hulk Hogan or somebody, big old scary monster of a man. And I'm so thankful that I listened. I listened, I listened, I listened. Because before I said anything, he started talking and he asked me, he asked me now, whoa, 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 that's him, not me. 
He says, where, uh, where, uh, 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 where are your Q-tips? So I said, needed to do something and, and and I wound up going into the army and when I was a young enlisted soldier I was a, an army medic was stationed in Germany for two years at a place called Lonstuhl big hospital over there then I was stationed at Fort Sill Oklahoma for a couple of years too and, and I, I, I loved it out there I love my people I love serving uh, couldn't help but laugh though at all the sergeants that I served with uh, uh, who could not spell the word sergeant uh, you see it's spelled S-A-R-G-E-N-T, S-E-A-R-G. I'm like, how in the world can you not spell your own rank? Until I became a lieutenant. <laughs> That's why we go by LT. <laughs> the support we had from back home just meant all the difference in the world. You know, it's easier to do your job when people love you and support you and respect you. My grandmother was one of our greatest supporters. She would send all kind of care packages. Sometimes it didn't make a whole lot of sense at the time. But in 0304, the mail would take about a month to get there and the PX truck would show up and it would run out of stuff just like that. Uh, 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 one of the tricks of the trade that you do in that type of, of weather, 125 degrees in the summer, is you get baby powder and you put it in every nook and cranny in your body. You help to absorb all the moisture and it just makes for a much more pleasant day in that type of environment well i woke up one day 125 degrees and i was out of baby powder but then i remember my awesome wonderful grandmother from tallapoosa county in alabama a great southern lady in a care package for some unknown reason she had sent me a five pound bag of self-rising flour <laughs> So me being the sharp lieutenant that I was, I got that self-rising flower. I put it in every nook and cranny on my body and I was good to go. It was self-rising and tingly. <laughs> then we wound up going in an emergency convoy that day. We're going about four hours down the road. We drop our load, we do a turn and burn. We get on back to Mosul. And by the time I get back, I am worn out. I'm tired, so I go back to my hooch. I pull off my Kevlar, I pull off my flak vest, I pulled off my shirt, and when I pulled off my t-shirt, two biscuits fell out. <laughs> Grandmama knew what she was doing. I wanna thank y'all so much for, for making this. this So I hope you enjoyed Jody uh, Fuller. I found him very interesting and it's remarkable that I found a comedian who talks about football because my story is about football. Uh, last week I mentioned that my father passed away uh, when I was 13 and I went to a trade school in Elizabeth, Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania. It was the Thomas Rankin Patton School for Boys. It's gone now. And it was 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. And in the entire school, 36 boys. That was it. And 18 of us were on the football team. Now, at the time, I was relatively short for my age. And I hadn't had my growth spurt yet. So, But I went out for football. And, of course, getting the gear to fit me was a little tough. And I didn't know any better. But we were playing junior varsity teams from public high schools in the area. Uh, if the, we had played the varsity, they would have, we have all been dead now. But we played the JV, and I was basically a, a bench warmer. And we had a game one day, I guess, mm, maybe towards the end of the season, and the coach put me in starting as a, uh, as a defensive player, uh, I guess a guard, which I like defense. So the first play from scrimmage, there's a run play right through me, and I get cross blocked across my knees, right across my knees. And I'm down. 
And I'm in a lot of discomfort. I'm in a lot of pain. And I look up, and they're huddling, the other team, and I'm still 10 yards back. So the referee finally knows me, and they took me off the field, and the coach says, uh, what's the problem? I said, uh, my knee is killing me. And of course, in those days, walk it off. And as I started to walk it off, he looked at my feet and realized that my shoes were uh, too big. And I was more or less walking on the sides than on the cleats because they were that big. He says, we didn't have any shoes to fit you. And I said, that was the best we had. Well, long story short, I spent the next four days in the hospital. They sent me down to Lancaster General. I was 14, I believe. And I was too young for the adult ward and way too old for the kiddie ward. But that's where they put me. So they put those guys to bed, those youngsters, probably two, three, four years old, around seven, eight o'clock. And I wheelchaired around the lobby and around the halls and was racing and having fun with the nurses until like 11. Then they sent me to back to the hospital across the street from the school, which is a Masonic home for the aged. And I was put in that hospital and I will never ever forget that smell as long as I live. They kept me out of hospitals, and I'm talking about for years, even visiting people, and I would not go into a hospital because I had that smell in my mind. And they say that sm odor is one of the strongest memories that we have. Uh, so after a night in that ward, and this was a, a men's ward, and basically they were there to die. Yeah. They, I finally convinced the doctor to let me go back and I would come back for treatment uh, every day, which was basically just some exercises. And that was uh, basically the uh, end of my football career. Uh, fortunately, I have not had any lasting repercussions from torn ligaments. They said that may happen, but I haven't uh, up to this point. And that's my football story. If you have a football story, why don't you write it down below? It's got to be better than mine. So, this is Rich Auerbach, headed for graduation uh, in a couple days. And yeah, we'll talk to you next week. Bye.